Hydrogen is the very essence of life. More than half of the sun is made up of hydrogen. Without the sun's light and heat, there would be no plant and animal life on Earth. Hydrogen is a necessary part of water. Without water, we could not live. Three-fifths of the atoms in living tissue, including our bodies, are hydrogen. Hydrogen is minutely present in the very air we breathe. We are largely unaware of hydrogen because it is an odorless, tasteless, colorless gas. Hydrogen has the ability to combine readily with nearly every other element. This explains the large number of compounds that contain hydrogen. One such compound is hydrogen cyanide, also known as hydrocyanic acid, prussic acid, or zyklon. Zyklon is the commercial product name Degesh used from the 1920s for its hydrogen cyanide disinfectant. Degesh is short for the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Schädlingsbekämpfung, or in English, the German Vermin Combating Corporation. IG Farben controlled Degesh. IG Farben was Europe's largest private corporation between 1925 and 1945. Zyklon takes its name from the German word for cyclone. Blausäure is German for cyanide, literally blue acid. Zyklon, when solid, is a blue crystalline substance. Zyklon kills insects, plants and animals. It is much more effective on warm-blooded animals than it is on insects. Zyklon comes in strengths A through E. Zyklon B is sufficient to kill humans. My experience growing up was that we didn't talk about your memories or what you had gone through. You can't even find the words for it. The, the simple facts. A gas is a substance that flows and increases in size until it fills a container. In its gaseous state, Zyklon B is colorless and smells of bitter almonds although some people are unable to distinguish this smell at all. There was often a southwest wind in Holland um, on the beaches. It was on Sunday mornings in the summer, not before the end of June, July, that the sea was warm enough to swim in, and we lived not far from the sea. And at the beach, uh, my parents always went to the same place. I remember you telling me she had one brown eye and one blue eye. Certainly, it was very distinct. Definitely one brown and one blue. I think it might even have been on her passport. I don't know. But uh, we, none of us have that. We all have sort of bluish green eyes. Which is interesting because my father had brown eyes too. So the blue was more dominant. I know that dad's parents were at the wedding and 
were you thinking a lot about the loss or were you thinking more about the future? In Mein Kampf, Hitler writes, anyone who wants to cure this era, which is inwardly sick and rotten, must first of all summon up the courage to make clear the cause of the disease. Rudolf Höss, commandant of Auschwitz, visited the death camp at Treblinka. Treblinka used carbon monoxide as an extermination weapon. Rudolf Höss saw that carbon monoxide was much too slow. When Himmler gave me the order, personally, in the summer of 1941, to prepare a place for mass killings, I could never have imagined the scale or what the consequences would be. The reasoning behind the order of this mass annihilation seemed correct to me. I wasted no thoughts about it. My mother would pack a breakfast and we would take the ball and uh, maybe some other stuff to play with and our towels to the beach. In the summer of 1941, in the Netherlands, the Nazis declared beaches, swimming pools, and parks out of bounds for Jews. We were just biding the time playing with that ball. The first small transports were shot by firing squad. We needed a more efficient method. We tried a gas called Zyklon B, prussic acid. Zyklon B was used to disinfect prisoners and to exterminate lice and vermin. There was always a supply on hand. The first gassing of people did not really sink into my mind. Perhaps I was much too impressed by the whole procedure. I must admit openly the gassings had a calming effect on me. In the near future, the mass annihilation of the Jews was to begin. Now I was at ease. We were all saved from these bloodbaths and the victims would be spared until the last moment. Often you don't remember the moments that pictures are taken. But, of course, when you look at them often, you think you remember. I do remember that I was very close to her and uh, that I loved sitting with her. A room with dummy showers was supposed to trick people. An SS doctor supervised the medical technicians who carefully poured the Zyklon B pellets into the gas chamber. The pellets instantly turned to gas, spreading first at floor level, then rising to the ceiling. A characteristic of Zyklon B is the great ease with which it penetrates the mucous membrane of the mouth, nose, esophagus, stomach, and lungs, and enters the bloodstream. When it is working, it does so with dramatic suddenness, through the paralysis of the respiratory center of the brain. Initial symptoms are headache, dizziness, and nausea. The body struggles to save the heart and brain. Those last moments, you, you do not want to, 
to visualize. Within 15 minutes, sometimes as few as five, everyone in the gas chamber is dead. A fan is switched on immediately after each gassing to disperse the gas and to speed up the clearing of the room. After a few minutes, the door can be unbolted. My parents probably died in October 44 in Auschwitz. This is the first time that we've discussed things like this. And I don't know why I was so drawn to that particular side of things. That's all right, because that's your way of looking at it. Everybody has their own way of, of uh, going back to, to what really happened. <laughs>